February 1st, 2003. The Space Shuttle Columbia was destroyed on re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, killing all seven astronauts aboard. The wreckage of the spacecraft fell over Texas and Louisiana and was slowly returned to NASA for investigation into the cause of the disaster. NASA concluded that 81 seconds into its launch, a piece of foam fell from the Columbia's external tank and struck the shuttle's wing. They concluded that the impact was enough to tear a hole into the thermal shielding that keeps the shuttle safe during re-entry. The damage to the shielding was enough to cause aerodynamic and thermodynamic abnormalities and caused enough heat and stress on the shuttle during its re-entry for it to break apart. As time has progressed since 2003, a number of people have emerged dissatisfied with the original explanation. No doubt you've seen videos claiming that the Columbia did not break apart by itself, but instead experienced some sort of attack that destroyed it. One such video even shows a destroyed shuttle floating over the Earth. In this version, Columbia was an apparent victim of an attack from a UFO. Of course, this video has since been debunked, but many still consider Columbia's demise a mystery that has yet to be solved. There is real evidence on the Columbia disaster that has not been explained, though. There are two popular theories about what brought the Columbia down. The most widely accepted theory, of course, is the official explanation from NASA. Damage from a piece of foam changed the aerodynamics of the Columbia enough to cause a catastrophic failure on its left wing upon re-entry. The alternate theory is that the Columbia was shot down by an external force. That external force could have been a UFO or it could have been a laser from a satellite that caused the shuttle to break apart. Most likely you've heard both of these theories and you probably believe one or the other to be true. But what if there's a third possibility, one that does not involve a conspiracy to kill astronauts for some reason, but also is more adequate than the explanation that NASA provided? There is one such theory that exists, but instead of a cloak and dagger story of secret assassination, it simply acknowledges that mainstream astronomy and science do not understand the fundamentals of our solar system, or our universe for that matter. And this is despite the fact that our scientists have been gathering for some time evidence that points exactly to a growing consensus of what our universe actually is. Our universe is indeed electric. Our sun is not a nuclear bomb, but an electrical z-pinch on a gigantic percolant current. An electric current flows freely between our sun and our planet. The most obvious testament to this is the aurora borealis, where percolant currents dance around the magnetic north and south poles. But we've also seen electric currents from space to our planet in other forms. Sprites appear in our skies, indicating transfer of electrical charge to our atmosphere. It can also be argued, electric currents from the Sun to Earth also drive jet streams in the ionosphere based on their patterns and chaotic changes. And we've seen solar activity coincide with weather patterns here on Earth. Ironically, Columbia herself provides a plethora of evidence of what happened to her, both in her last mission and in missions prior. In 1996, Columbia flew the SDS-75 mission. Its major experiment was to deploy a space tether from the shuttle and lower its end into the ionosphere of the Earth. 
The concept was meant to explore alternative ways to power the International Space Station and provide a more efficient means for course correction and stabilization thrust. But the experiment was cut short when the tether unexpectedly broke and the experimental pod separated from the rest of the device. Subsequent analysis of the data showed that the current running through the tether was three times the amount they expected during the experiment. It was enough to burn through the conductor and everything else holding it together. But where did this current come from? We can see hints of the source in our skies. The lightning from our clouds to the ground are mirrored by sprites from the heavens above to our clouds. Just like the aurora borealis is fed by massive electrical current from our sun to our poles, electrical current feeds our atmosphere with vibrant energy. In the late summer 2017, a series of massive coronal ejections fired from the sun outwards into the solar system bathing the Earth with electromagnetic energy. A series of supermassive hurricanes and earthquakes followed. Although not quite as spectacular as the Northern Lights, sprites, which are electrical transfers from the cosmos to our Earth, still can be seen quite easily if you know where to look. The clouds then act as sort of a lightning rod for incoming energy from space. In a similar fashion, the tether from the STS-75 experiment also acted as a lightning rod to electrical potentials from the sun. Scientists who promote the Electric Universe model have actually pointed out that such a tether acted as a cosmic lightning rod, and that concepts such as space elevators are basically impossible because of this. In many of our recent observations of objects in our solar system, we are witness to the true electrical nature of everything around us. The second piece of evidence Columbia provides us happens during her doomed re-entry. This footage shows the crew of the Columbia casually explaining to a newcomer what she's seeing outside the cockpit windows. Just hang in the back, I guess. Andrew, I'll take your bag. And float it aft gently. I got it. That might be uh, some plasma now. Think so, Ernie? Really? Uh, the jets are not firing right now. Uh, it was quite a bit, actually. Yeah, we see it out the front also. There's some plasma. Tell me when there's good stuff out front. I'm filming overhead right now. That's uh, kind of dull. Uh, it'll be obvious when the time comes. Plasma. We call it the fourth state of matter, but in reality, it's the most abundant form of matter in the universe. More than 99% of everything in the cosmos is composed of it. Simply put, plasmas are the substances that are ionized or that contain more or less electrons in their atomic orbits than protons in their nuclei. Plasma is electrically charged and it is electrically conductive. It is the medium by which electrical charge transfers through space. In this plasma, electrical current travels in filament pathways known as Birkeland current, like the ones that power the aurora borealis. In this photo, the white line is a trail of plasma, ionized gas produced by the Columbia during re-entry. This ionized trail would have been electrically conductive and much like the tether experiment of 1996, would have acted as a lightning rod, attracting current from space. And it did. You can see the lightning bolt here, from space, arcing in a haphazard pathway until it connects with the line. Once connected, a massive amount of electrical current raced down the line to the shuttle, striking it with an electrical force much greater than the power from lightning bolts on Earth. The data provided by the Columbia in the moments before she broke up provide additional evidence that points to electrical static discharge as the culprit. Her sensors detected abnormalities in the Columbia's aerodynamics, an entire suite of four temperature sensors in the left wing went offline. 
The cause of this failure could easily be attributed to the cosmic version of electrostatic discharge. In the manufacturing of electronics, electrostatic discharge is the transfer of electrical current between two objects over open air. The concern in this sort of environment is that electrical charge can build up on a person or material and then accidentally transfer to an electrically sensitive product, such as a printed circuit board, damaging the components crucial for the product to function correctly. Electronics manufacturers take extensive steps to avoid this. Their manufacturers wear ESD smocks and grounding straps to prevent electrical charge buildup on manufacturing personnel. They transfer electrically sensitive components in specially designed packages that transfer electric current around its exterior, keeping the contents inside safe from any charge. In the scenario of a cosmic lightning strike, the damaged wing of the Columbia may still have played a role in the Columbia's demise, but that role may have been to expose the wing to electrical currents that it was not able to withstand. With these pieces of evidence and the acknowledgement of the electric universe model, we can paint a realistic picture of what actually happened to the Columbia. The Columbia entered the Earth's atmosphere when solar activity was fairly high. The plasma trail that the Columbia left behind was electrically conducted and acted as a lightning rod to any power source from the sun. It was then that a sprite arced and hit the ionized trail and a massive amount of electrical current subsequently traveled from that point to the Columbia, damaging the wing to the point where safe re-entry was not possible.